Hello guys, so I received the first invoice for the first month of Laravel Cloud, as many other people who started with the cloud because it was launched a month ago. In this video, I will try to explain all the lines in my own invoice, also will have a plan and I will discuss it with you. Can we save maximum amount of money if we have only testing project for our own usage that could be very cheap and then in the third portion of this video we will read the replies to my tweet so i posted my own invoice and asked other people about their invoices was it higher or lower than they expected so this is my invoice for the first month nine dollars and 31 cents this is discounted because i was participating in the early access program which gave $200 off for the first two months. So this is kind of a disclaimer. I'm not actually paying those $9 for now. So I'm kind of playing around and evaluating the platform, whether I will stick around for Laravel Cloud or whether I will move more projects to it. But $9 per month for what? For one testing project, demo project, only for myself. I'm the only user just to save the inspirational notes. Not sure if you've seen the earlier video where I tried to deploy that project to the cloud for the first time. I will link that in the description below. So this is a project with one server with MySQL database at the moment. And we'll talk about database in a minute. MySQL versus PostgreSQL. This is very important if you care about pricing and no additional resources, no cache, no buckets, no nothing. Also in terms of size, the flex is 512 megabytes of RAM, not the cheapest one, but this was actually the default choice when I created that server. And with MySQL, the server size is 512 megs of RAM. This is the cheapest one. Now, what brings that project to $9? First, App Compute is the actual server, that Flex server that I've shown you. 514 hours of time of that server running, and this is hourly price. That price comes from Compute page on the pricing page of Laravel Cloud, and I've chosen EU Frankfurt. The prices in different regions are a bit different, but basically this is my price per hour, which by default calculates to 767 per month, just for the server without the database. Next, bandwidth was very small, so it's zero. So as you can see, only 400 requests in total, so we skip those lines at all. And now let's go to the database. This is very important. So for this project, I tried both PostgreSQL and MySQL. My local database for that project was MySQL. I tried to import that into Postgre, it failed and I was lazy to fix it. So then I switched to MySQL for the rest of the month. So it's kind of partial month for both databases. Now for PostgreSQL, it's serverless with auto hibernation, which means if there are no requests to PostgreSQL, then it is hibernated and you save on compute. So these lines are for PostgreSQL. So compute server was active for 0.46 hours. And this is the price for one hour, which made seven cents. And I had only 0 0.02 gigabytes. So this is the price for a gigabyte of storage. So for the whole period I was using PostgreSQL, I paid only 10 cents. Now, when I switched to MySQL around a week ago, these are the numbers. So for the server of MySQL, I have 177 hours, which is roughly seven days. This is the price for one hour and it doesn't auto hibernate. And the price for the database is a bit below on the same pricing page. So this is my price. Although actually I'm not sure because my server is 512 megs of RAM. So it should be probably this price. I'm not entirely sure. And by the way, kind of a disclaimer, don't take my advice as any financial advice or correct calculations because I'm also trying to figure that out, calculate with you and we can discuss in the comments. And also Laravel Cloud itself as a platform may make mistakes and may be missing some data as I will show you in a minute. But let's say I have this hourly rate and then for that month, I would pay $13 for my SQL. So I paid $3 for seven days so multiply that by roughly four times and then the database storage is 24 cents per gigabyte and that invoice says that i have two gigabytes although on the dashboard of laravel cloud in the usage here in resources you can check your resources including databases so in the resources for mysql this is my current compute hours but i can choose a previous period where I get that invoice from and here I have zero. So I cannot even check how many gigabytes do I have. I can of course export the database and see the size, but it's a very small database. 
I have doubts that it actually has two gigabytes. So that line of invoice, I would probably go debate into Laravel Cloud support if I had to pay real money for that. For now, it's just a question mark. And see, that's the thing with the pricing of AWS or Laravel Cloud or whatever of those platforms, it's not really crystal clear. The prices per unit are clear almost, but the unit amount is kind of unpredictable sometimes. So for MySQL, for roughly a week, Laravel Cloud calculated the price of $3.80. So if I continue the same route the next month, I would get the invoice for $13.29 for MySQL at least, plus $7.67 for Flex, and also something for database storage. So it's more than $20 just for simple project. Of course, I could lower it down a little by choosing the cheapest server here, and also the cheapest MySQL compute, this one. So it would be roughly $12 per month minimum. And if you blindly compare that price to any of the popular VPS systems, like DigitalOcean would be $6 per month, Hetzner probably would be even a bit cheaper, like $4 or $5 per month. So cloud, from that perspective, is quite a bit more expensive. That is, if you choose the default MySQL. The secret to get it cheaper is PostgreSQL. So I will show you my second project, which I installed just a few days ago, and this doesn't calculate into previous invoice. This will be for the next invoice. I was trying to benchmark the performance of filament table. And for that, I've deployed a testing project to the cloud where I'm the only user. This is just for benchmarking and testing the project. In here for the server, I've chosen the cheapest one and also enabled hibernation. So hibernation is also available for servers as well as PostgreSQL databases. So in the documentation of compute for Laravel Cloud, this is hibernation information. Basically, the server is hibernated if it doesn't receive requests, but then it wakes up in roughly 5 to 20 seconds. In my experiments, it's roughly 10 seconds each time. So in that case, if I understand correctly, again, this is an experiment, I don't pay for that time when the hibernation is active. So I've set 10 minutes. And then also the same thing for PostgreSQL database. I click here and this is hibernate after 300 seconds. So after five minutes. So the servers are active only like five minutes at a time for PostgreSQL server and 10 minutes at a time for main server if they get the requests. As a result, in the usage section for this current period for that project, I see 17 hours of CPU usage. And even that is weirdly high because I've used that project only for shooting the video and maybe some other people visited that from the video about filament. So I would debate the real usage of CPU should have been only a few hours. So I'm not sure where that 17 is coming from. But even in that 17, that is really low. For the rest of the month, I will not visit that project. I will even probably remove that server. And then I get charged only for 17 hours times 001, which is roughly 17 cents. So I don't pay the monthly fee for VPS like DigitalOcean. There's no like $6 per month. It's only cents. And then with the database, we can go at resources. And I've used the same old cluster for the database and see zero compute hours. So that database is mostly in auto hibernation. And this is also debatable. So why 17 hours for the server and zero hours for database compute? Maybe there's some kind of mistake here. But basically, what I'm trying to say is Laravel Cloud could be a great use case if you have testing project only for yourself to test something, benchmark something, and then shut down, remove that server. So you pay only for compute, not for the full month. I will probably shoot another video in a month after I receive the invoice for the second month, and I will report how that story goes. And now let's see what other people say about their invoices for Laravel Cloud. So after my tweet, I received a few replies with real numbers, with real invoices, and I will show them to you. But also I will link the tweet in the description below and you can read all the replies. So this is one use case. Production plan for 20, which I actually don't pay. I'm on sandbox plan, which means I don't get custom domains, which I don't care about at the moment. But if you want the production plan, it's already $20. But then that person uploaded the project and got charged 
$20 for just a few days. Well, not a few days, actually from March 16th, probably March 23rd or 4th, basically a week. But I'm not entirely sure because in the end, they had to cancel right away. So in this case, the price would be too high to afford. And from what I see, database compute is pretty high here, which means the server, the database server is not the cheapest. And also app compute is not the cheapest either. I'm not sure which server size that person has chosen but definitely not the cheapest one. But another counter example from Robin looks like this, much lower than I thought, we'll keep using it. So usage to date is only 96 cents, so app compute is 13 cents, which probably means lower server specification, and PostgreSQL is serverless, which means auto hibernation when needed, so overall, very positive experience from that person. But then the most impressive example comes from Charles, and this may be the target audience for Laravel Cloud in general. Look at this. Their invoice is $277, which seems like a lot. But Charles is saying that it's a good amount comparing to AWS invoice last month. And then in the replies, a few more people ask Charles about the details. And this is the system, multi-tenancy system with hundreds of customers, thousands of operations per second. DB is Aurora with 7 million records at a time in cash. And as a result, compared to AWS, their cost dropped by $4,000. So imagine as a business, Laravel Cloud potentially could save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars. This is one example. Again, I don't have more details. I'm looking at a public tweet. I don't have the information, the internal things about that project. But as I said, I think this may be the primary customer for Laravel Cloud. Company who wants more predictable pricing than AWS. So if you look at Laravel Cloud and compare that to general VPS like DigitalOcean, cheapest versus cheapest, Laravel Cloud is a bit more expensive. But then again, the ultimate conclusion about the pricing of Laravel Cloud is, wait for it, it depends. So it's very individual based on your project, your database choice, other resources, your traffic, and other parameters. So you can probably consider this video as kind of the first month experiment where calculations are probably a little bit incorrect it's rough numbers and probably my future video in a month about laravel cloud pricing will be more accurate with more stories from people more clarity and transparency from the core laravel team they are actually actively helping people to lower down their costs. So for example, my friend Vlad is tweeting that he received a bigger invoice, but dear people from cloud jumping to help. Or the example, even after this tweet that I already showed you, Thomas sent a DM to help lower the price and make cloud work for that person. So yeah, the cloud team is also active and we'll see what it comes down to in a month. What do you think about this whole pricing thing? Have I missed something? I probably have. Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.